Considering that PhD completion rates are quite low, they are about 56% in the US and about 80% in the UK, which is still low considering the time and effort and most importantly the money invested in the process, uh, a question may arise as to whether uh, is even worth the effort. So is doing a PhD still worth it in 2022 and beyond? As you may expect, the answer to this question is far from being straightforward. It will depend on many factors, it will depend on individual people. Uh, so of course I cannot make that decision for you, but what I hope to do in this video is to show you some facts, uh, present you with some facts to help you either make that decision or if you've already enrolled in a PhD and maybe you have some doubts, uh, to help you make the most of it and make sure that you make uh, that experience worth it. Uh, and then at the end of the video I'll give you my verdict, what I think and again how I think you can uh, maximize uh, the value of this experience. So when talking about uh, relevant facts related to do, doing a PhD, uh, let's focus on two possible career paths after doing a PhD. So uh, one of these, although this is a simplification of course, but generally you can put these careers, career paths into two broad categories. One of them would be those who wish to remain in academia and uh, in other words stay at the university, work at the university and those who want to look for a job elsewhere. So look outside the university, look for an industry job. And in both cases, there seem to be some problems. So firstly, uh, within the university, considering that essentially PhD is a detailed training that helps you, uh, prepares you mostly for working in academia, the number of job openings does not match the number of students. So in other words, there are way too many PhD students uh, for the number of available positions at the university. At the same time, if you look outside of academia, if you look at uh, the industry jobs, the employers, uh, the employers uh, complain about the level, uh, the low number of skilled employees, the low number of skilled employees. Uh, suggesting therefore that PhDs do not really prepare uh, students for these uh, future positions. And this is hardly surprising because writing reports, writing uh, sections, chapters, articles, uh, giving academic presentations, talking about academic topics and conducting long uh, literature reviews uh, are hardly helpful in a world where technical knowledge has to be assimilated quickly and present it simply to a wide audience, which is basically what happens in, in that industry outside of academia. The university career services do not really prepare the graduates, uh, the future graduates for jobs outside of academia. And this is uh, evident in uh, some more uh, statistics, some more numbers uh, regarding uh, the percentages and numbers of graduates who find work after they graduate. So one such study, for example, shows that five years after receiving their degrees, more than 60% of PhDs in Slovakia and more than 45% in Belgium, the Czech Republic, Germany and Spain were still on temporary contracts. Also in Germany, 13% of all PhD graduates end up in lowly occupations. So again, far from uh, the perfect outcome, far from what you are expecting probably once you embark on your PhD program. At the same time, there are also uh, statistics and studies that demonstrate that PhDs earn, hardly earn any better money than master's graduates. So there, the percentages are slightly higher by about one or two percentage for PhD students, which again, considering the effort, considering how long that uh, PhD program is, how much money you have to invest, doesn't make much sense. So basically it seems based on these uh, numbers, based on these statistics, it seems that it's much better to uh, complete a short course or, or a master's study, which again is usually shorter than to spend all these three or four or up to 10 years sometimes doing your PhD, because at the end you're likely to earn very similar money. So of course looking at these numbers can be quite discouraging. So when you look at the number, the low numbers of PhD uh, graduates who find employment, when you read about these employers who complain about the low uh, or irrelevant skill set of PhD uh, graduates, of course this is very discouraging and you may start wondering whether it is in fact worth it. So now let's turn to another context and let's assume that you, you wish to remain in academia. So uh, lots of students embark on their PhD programs and they plan to stay in academia. They want to be lecturers or do some research within the university. But here these numbers and these facts are equally 
if not more discouraging. It has been reported, for example, that between 2005 and 2009, in the US, more than 100,000 doctoral degrees were produced, but in the same period, there were only 16,000 new professorships. In Canada, in turn, the numbers are smaller, but still there is a large disproportion. So for uh, 4,800 doctorate degrees in 2007, uh, only 2,616 uh, people, professors, were hired. So what exactly is happening here? Well, unfortunately, the universities at some point uh, seem to have discovered that they have a cheap, motivated and disposable workforce at their disposal in the form of the current PhD students. So, which means that uh, a lot of uh, teaching at universities takes place or is delivered by PhD students, which of course cuts uh, the number of full-time positions in, in the same universities. And when it comes to research as opposed to teaching, the situation is very similar. Uh, most of research being conducted at universities at the moment is being conducted by postdocs uh, as opposed to full-time research staff. Uh, there are many problems associated with this, with this position. Uh, of a postdoc. In fact, there is a whole uh, blog article recently written by one of one of you, one of my guest uh, writers for my blog. I'll link to that article in the description. But to summarize, a postdoc does not earn too much. 80% uh, of postdocs earn the sal average salary of a construction worker, which is okay. It's not a bad salary, but again, probably not that good considering the amount of effort that you had to put into your PhD. Uh, in addition to that, the author of that mentioned article uh, explains how doing a postdoc may essentially affect your chances of getting an industry career. So if you decide after several years that you're, you've had enough and you want to look for a job elsewhere, uh, this postdoc experience may actually uh, negatively affect your chances. Now, before I deliver my verdict on whether I think doing a PhD is still worth it, I just wanted to remind you to uh, like the video to help others find it. And also uh, remind you that I am in constant need of guest writers for my blog. So if you're interested, if you feel like you have some thoughts to share, feel free to follow the link under the video to find out everything that you need to know about becoming a guest writer for my blog. And now on to the verdict. So uh, having painted this negative and pessimistic picture of doing a PhD, does it mean that I simply don't think it's still worth doing a PhD in 2022 and beyond. Well, not necessarily so. Uh, as one of uh, bloggers I follow reflected in his blog article on a similar topic, it is up to you to make it worth it. It is up to you to make it worth it. And this is a very powerful thought. So essentially, whether it's worth it will depend on two things, in my opinion, on your reasons, your motivations for doing a PhD and then for, uh, for how you prepare yourself for your future career once you are enrolled in the PhD program. So now regarding the reasons for doing a PhD first. Uh, so I don't think it's worth it if you're just after the badge or that title, that doctor title in front of your name, because you think it, it sounds good. So definitely not worth it. If you're uh, unemployed or you just want to get a job and that's your main reason, again, definitely not worth it because of course you'll have to spend several years of your life uh, to get that uh, certification and, that, and then probably several years to, to find an actual job. So uh, not to mention that if you're unemployed and you're, you're in a need of, of job, you may not have enough money to sponsor, to fund that experience. So definitely not worth it, but I don't think I really have to explain that. To you, uh, which leads to the, the final reason why when it's not worth it is simply if you're just after the money. So you're thinking, well, I don't really enjoy studying. I don't really enjoy this idea of studying and being there, being stuck at the university for a couple of years, but it will give me good money. So I will do that nevertheless. So that's again, probably not the best uh, motivation, not the best idea to do this. But now I hear you asking, wait a minute, does it mean that I cannot hope to earn good money when I enroll on a PhD program. And that's not what I said. In fact, I, uh, I agree that you have every right, of course, to be hoping to earn good money when you receive your PhD. That's why you're, you're here. That's why you are ready to put all that effort and all that money and all that time, because of course you want to provide for your family. Of course you want to make a good living. In fact, um, I remember a situation when I was uh, sitting in a, in a workshop or a lecture 
about career prospects uh, and I remember hearing uh, the following that if you are here for the money, if you're hoping to earn good money, you're probably here for wrong reasons. And I remember being very sad and disappointed to hear that, uh, considering that it was year three, my final year of my PhD. I remember hearing that and thinking, did I just make the biggest mistake of my life? Because they just told me it's definitely not a good thing to do if you want to earn good money. So I was very disappointed to hear that because of course uh, I was there for the money. Of course, I just sacrificed three years of my life. Of course, I'm not doing that just for fun. I'm doing that for the money. I'm hoping to earn good money. So um, so I don't think there is any anything wrong with wanting to earn good money. You have every right to do that. In fact, I hate when people say that. I hate when they, they make you feel guilty about wanting to earn good money after your PhD because everybody is here for the money. Let's agree on this. Everybody. Why, why do we have so many teacher and lecturer and professors protests here in the UK? Because they want more money. They are here for the money. Don't ever listen to them if they are telling you that they are not here for the money and you shouldn't be here for the money. All I'm saying is that if that's your primary and or if that's your only motivation for doing a PhD, you probably have lots of other better options there. So you don't have to spend all this time being stuck at the university. As I said before, you're uh, very likely to get a very high paying job if you just do a master's or if you do some kind of a certificate or even if you don't follow that path at all. Construction workers, they, they make really good money. Any other skilled laborers make really good money. So that's what I'm saying. If you just need the money, it's probably not the best career path. But if you feel that you are interested in, in whatever you are interested in, if you feel that you are enjoying doing research, you want to learn about things, you want to maybe contribute to some field, you're genuinely interested in what uh, awaits in this whole uh, PhD experience and you're hoping to make some money, then of course it's a good reason to do that because you will eventually make money, you will eventually find a way to make money with your PhD. And now finally regarding the ways to prepare for the future. So as I said, uh, PhD is worth it if you make it worth it. And there are two ways again. So the first way, the first uh, thing I discussed was the, the motivation. So why you're here. And the second thing is how you prepare, how well do you prepare for the future? I think that if there are graduates watching this, you'll agree, I'm 100% sure you'll agree with me that one of the biggest regrets usually after you graduate is that you haven't done enough to prepare for these different careers. Usually you kind of feel comfortable and happy in that little bubble of being a PhD student because you don't have to worry about anything else but your PhD. You don't feel like you want to be worrying at the moment about the jobs and all this stuff. And this is a big mistake. And I remember being told that several times, but I still didn't do anything about it. So, so that's the, the key mistake. You want to be preparing for the future. You want to be uh, making sure that later you'll have several different doors open, several different paths uh, which you can which you can take. So uh, it's a whole separate topic. I do have uh, some videos about this too. I have a video where I talk, for example, about preparing job applications, in which I explain how to uh, how to prepare, what kind of experience you'll need, and it's, it can be simple things. So, uh, so I'm not necessarily talking about uh, volunteering, which is a great thing, by the way. And again, I remember thinking, why would I ever do this? But it, it's now, it sounds like a very good thing to me. But you don't necessarily have to have time to do that. But even small things like giving presentations, organizing little workshops or study groups, uh, things like that. I explain in that video how this will eventually help you and how you can take these experiences and, and present them to your future employers in a completely different and more attractive way. So I strongly recommend that you watch that video in which I break down all these different experiences and skills and explain how these little things, these seemingly little things are actually crucial. So that's what I mean by preparing now, preparing for the future. So I guess to sum up and to summarize, it is worth it if you make it worth it, just like I said several times, uh, as long as you're really thinking about your future and as long as you think you are passionate about what you want to explore, I would strongly recommend doing a PhD. So despite all these discouraging facts, 
if you have the drive, if you have the motivation, then I think you are in the right place. So that's all uh, about this topic. I hope you enjoyed this video. I hope you learned something new. Again, if you did, please like the video to help others find it. And again, just as a reminder, if you feel that you would like to write, you like to write, you have something to share, feel free to explore the links under the video and explore the ways in which you can contribute to my blog.